Thank you all for joining us tonight for the talk with Juan Carlos Davila about his film Drills of Liberation, a film about the organizing to fight the fiscal crisis in Puerto Rico. This talk, by the way, will be available in both English and with Spanish interpretation, thanks to the help of Julieta Salgado and Flor Lopez Trejo. You can choose to hear the talk in English or Spanish by clicking on the bottom of your screen on the globe and, uh, and then go on from there. I'll give you a few seconds to choose which language and someone else is going to say the same information in Spanish for us. Um, yes. Hola, muy buenas tardes. Eh, me llamo Julieta y junto a mi compañera Flor estaremos dándoles, eh, proviéndoles interpretación en español e inglés. Entonces, como acaba de explicar a uh, JT, si es que usted eh, necesita oír español o inglés, puede hacer clic en el botón de un globo terráqueo que estará eh, a, en la parte baja de su pantalla y de ahí le puede hacer clic al inglés o español. Si está utilizando una tableta o un teléfono, haga clic en los tres puntitos y ahí podrá encontrar la eh, interpretación. Y cualquier problema que tengan, por favor, lo ponen en el chat. Muchas gracias. So I hope you've all had a chance to watch the film Drills of Liberation, which we've been streaming since Monday and will end tonight. I'm JT Takagi of Third World Newsreel, a progressive media center that prioritizes media by and about people of color and social justice issues. We do this through production, educational distribution, exhibition, training, and events like this. This event is also co-sponsored by the Documentary Forum at CCNY, a center within City College of New York that's dedicated to supporting documentary film and nonfiction visual storytelling through multi-platform media. It is also co-sponsored by Centro, the Center for Puerto Rican Studies at Hunter College. I want first to have you join me in acknowledging that we are on the unceded territory of the Lenny Lenape, Canarsie, Shinnecock, and Muncie people. We acknowledge and challenge the harm that continues to be inflicted upon indigenous and people of color communities here and abroad, which is why we all need to be part of the struggle for rights, equality, and justice. Some housekeeping notes. We are keeping attendees muted, but welcome your questions and comments in the chat. Before we start the talk, though, we're going to play a trailer from the film to remind us what we're talking about tonight. Aquí han pasado hace 10, 12 años un montón de medidas donde nos han eliminado la capacidad de vivir bien en este país. Y nada, el, el gobierno no es una alternativa. Puerto Rico has $73 billion in debt. And so, uh, we are going to uh, put in uh, to effect an oversight board. Right sizing the government is necessary because it's not affordable. Nosotros Hurricane Maria, which just made landfall in Puerto Rico this morning, as a Category 4 storm just down from Category 5 hurricane. We are dying here. Vamos a maximizar los recursos porque a veces se nos queda gente sin comer. Es una porción pequeña. Queremos dar más, pero no podemos. Pensamos que la mejor manera de girar la dinámica en otra dirección es contribuyendo a que la población esté mejor. Que tienen que ser la, la población afectada por el colonialismo la que en última instancia resista el colonialismo. Now, I hate to tell you, Puerto Rico, but you've thrown our budget a little out of whack.
right, so I'm very pleased to host Juan Carlos Davila, the filmmaker of the film that you just saw a trailer for. And uh, he, he will be in conversation with Carolyn Gil Rodriguez. I'll be doing short intros right now, but you will see longer information about our guests in the chat. And as I do that, I'm also going to bring them on screen. Um, Juan Carlos Davila is a documentary filmmaker and multimedia journalist who focuses on coloniality, climate change, and networked social movements. He's directed three feature-length documentaries, and this film, Drills of Liberation, is the first to be released in theaters. Besides his own films, Davila is also the series producer for Hunter College's Center for Puerto Rican Studies television series. He'll be speaking tonight with a good friend of Federal Newsroom and a good friend of his, Carolyn Gil Rodriguez. Carolyn Gil Rodriguez is a time based media conservator, archivist, and writer from Puerto Rico. She's the director of preservation and media collections at Electronic Arts Intermix. So, welcome, Juan and Carolyn. Hi, thank you for, for inviting us here. So I'm going to let Carolyn take over now. As soon as she unmutes herself. Hello, hi everyone. Thank you. Sorry for that uh, technical glitch. Um, uh, thank you. Thank you for that introduction, JG. And just want to say briefly that it's uh, a pleasure to be in conversation with Juan in this event hosted by Third World Newsreel. You alluded to it, JG, but we, uh, myself and Third World Newsreel, have a, a history. And I've known Juan Carlos for some time now. I consider him a, a colleague and a friend, and I'm a long, long time admirer of his work. So I just wanted to to note that, yeah, that um, I'm very happy to be part of this event today. So yeah, I'll, I'll start with a couple of questions just to warm up the room a little bit. Um, and I thought we could begin at the beginning. <laughs> Uh, so, so Juan, uh, I don't know if you want to tell us a bit about how you got started or how you started your career in documentary filmmaking and um, also how you ended up working on, on the topic of austerity for this one uh, film or for this film specifically. And, and uh, I found it very interesting how you at the start of the or at the beginning of the film, you you specifically say that you want to use the cinematic cinematographic language to represent austerity. So a little bit of a reflection on that as well. Okay, uh, thank you, Carolyn, for the questions. And um, and yeah, I'm also a great admirer of your work. And uh, yeah, I'm very glad to uh, be uh, here also uh, in a in an event hosted by Terrible News Real, which is also another organization that I have a, a lot of respect for, uh, thanks to J, J, JT and, and Rosalie too. So, uh, so uh, I, I started my uh, career as a as a documentary filmmaker, uh, so, sort of what uh, by accident, really, because I did not uh, what was you know going to the university thinking that I wanted to to be a documentary filmmaker. I I knew I wanted to to be a filmmaker. Uh, so I think you know it, it was a becoming myself a, a documentary filmmaker was a way of of me finding my voice and and what I am going to be uh, contributing to to this. Uh, uh, this uh, form of art, right? So I decided that I am going to uh, focus in, in documentary filmmaking. And uh, you know, it happens many times that people say, uh, you know, uh, are you going to make uh, other films? Are you going to make fiction films? And uh, you know, it's something that uh, that I, I would uh, not uh, put, uh, I would not say no. But uh, but really, you know, I am I am very focused in in the documentary filmmaking. I think it's uh, it's really. Uh, the the genre that that has selected me uh, in cinema is where I, I I really feel that you know I I can contribute and that and that I want to contribute so uh, just because of the also uh, political work that I do I find uh, 
I find uh, documentary filmmaking to to be my space. Not to say that you cannot do the same political work with with a fiction film. Perhaps you can help to be uh, more mainstream many of the topics. But I like to, you know, uh, as a as a documentary filmmaker, I am a documentary filmmaker that likes to operate with a small crew. I like to operate uh, the camera sometimes direct from the camera, working a lot of uh, observational. So in that sense, uh, for me, uh, filmmaking is, is not just about uh, the genre, but also about uh, the methodology to make a documentary film, right? Uh, not just about the format, but just the process that I go through making a documentary film is something I enjoy a lot. And I suppose that if at some point uh, I will make a fiction film, it will be uh, very similar to a documentary style uh, type of film. <laughs> so, uh, so some somehow maybe like type of medium pool like actual Wexler or something like that. Always look at at that. But uh, but going into that, you know, saying I I went a bit off topic there. But uh, but the, but uh, what what happened? It it was that uh back in two thousand ten two thousand eleven, what there was a, a, a protest here in Puerto Rico, uh, the university students and. Uh, and I started filming that for a uh, news network, uh, Telesur from Venezuela. And really, you know, uh, with that, uh, you know, through that experience working with Telesur, I, I found that I had a lot of uh, passion in, in journalism and, and, and in documentation because it, it perhaps it, uh, also journalism, although I, I don't consider documentary film uh, journalism, but uh, although there are some films that have a journalistic aspect, like perhaps Girls of Liberation, but, uh, but journalism uh, was also a pathway to, to making, uh, uh, to, to going into documentary film, because with Telesur, I was making somewhat, uh, you know, more like cinematic shots when, when I was hired with them, you know, the, the, the type of stuff that they were asking for me to do back then, uh, it was uh, very cinematic. They wanted to, to make a, uh, really, really for me to, to be very uh, cautious. And uh, the way I, I learned in communication schools uh, to do a news journalism uh, or video journalism, it was like, you know, you, you it's like, a, it's not as scared or as tender as it would be film. And then, and then with working with Telesur and, and exploring later on documentary film, I saw that I could, you know, do a, a journalism uh, also very tender, right? And uh, and very profound. So uh, I think you know, looking at at also uh, how I can make journalism more cinematic, I went into uh, documentary film, and uh, and I see and and uh, and then I by by that time I was also uh, documenting uh, another struggle that was happening in Puerto Rico about the beaches. Uh, there was a, a Marriott hotel that was going to be. Uh, constructing in, in a beach area and some activists, uh, uh, you know, uh, created a camp there. So uh, they would stop the construction. So I started documenting that, but I started documenting that in the sense that I think this is important. Somebody needs to film this, nobody's filming this. So uh, myself as an activist, uh, uh, I thought it was important to, to do it. And when I was filming and filming, then it came the, at some point that I started doing interviews. And then at some point I have a lot of material. And uh, I think in that sense, ignorance was a bliss because, you know, I, I didn't know what was uh, the, the, host, the the difficulties of making a documentary film. But I decided to, uh, to in my free time, put that film together. And within a year, I I, uh, I put that, that first film uh, together. So I, I I so you know I, I think those two are, are are key aspects of me going into film and then you know I, I see it like like uh this is my speciality in the in I mean I'm not saying that I'm an expert or in, you know compared to any other filmmakers but I would say like if, if I was a, a doctor and you need to specialize in 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 a, in a type of medicine right like doctors often do uh, then I would I chose to specialize in, in documentary film and I and that and it has been a very uh, conscious decision and uh, after covering those uh, protests at the university and then after uh, making that documentary I went into the social documentary program uh, masters 
at uh, UC Santa Cruz in California. And then I did a master's there. And from there on, you know, I have uh, continued my my journalism, my, um, my, my journalism career too, in a way, my uh, documentary film uh, career, you know, uh, being very, trying to be very, uh, you know, clever in the way that, uh, you know, uh, that I do it because I don't have a salary to make documentary films. So I have needed to do all, all sort of uh, uh, different uh, strategies to be able to to continue to make uh, documentary film. I just sometimes get commissioned some projects that, you know, keep, keep me, keeps me going. But films like this, uh, I have not, you know, make a, a penny from <laughs> drills of liberation, right? And uh, if so, and any money that comes in goes into the next project. So, um, so then that so really uh, going into the the other part of uh, how I got into this aspect of of making this film, uh, drills of liberation. What uh, really, uh, you know, I was. I, I think I am like Caroline was saying, I'm, you know, I, I, I say it a lot in the, in the, I say it in the film, you know, I was like, I was looking forward for a way to, to show austerity in cinema. And this was something that, this was something that I, 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 before, uh, before uh, Drills of Liberation, I, my, my thesis film was about precarity in, in, in youth in Puerto Rico, in Puerto Rico, uh, 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 young workers, you know, uh, workers that just graduated from from university, and then I I, I figured that you know there's a, a I was already exploring that you know there was a, a a lot of effects that the Puerto Rican economic crisis was having, but uh, but you know many of the analyses and many of the people who, who tend to talk about the economic crisis, even people that that are from the left and are activists, tend to concentrate many times in the data in the in the law in, in the legal aspects and the economic aspect and you know and for me at the end those that, that is important but uh, are just numbers or, or in, in tables right or in graphics and i think you know that is not really gets into the 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 deepness of what should be uh, in cinema right uh, that it should uh, be a way of you to experience. You know, it's not just about how having an economic or legal analysis of how the economic crisis is affecting, but just leaving it or trying to show it and represent it with one person. And uh, because I, I think for me, even if one person is struggling, there is a crisis. So mm -hmm. if one person is having a you know, is, is having a, a rough time paying the, the electrical bills, is unemployed, you know, is, is having no access to healthcare. That is enough for me to say the country has a crisis until everybody uh, has met all, all the basic necessities, we are still going to be in a crisis. So you, so for me, you know, it was showing that it was, I, I, I from the very beginning, I was saying, I want to, to make a film uh, about a, uh, political economy really which is what i feel you know in a way it is a uh, uh, drills of liberation but i don't want to interview experts or uh, you know or the so-called experts to tell me what's going on i want to observe and look and uh and i started with that i i did not have a clear path uh, uh, when I started making the documentary, uh, I, I think in that way it it was a very experimental work compared to the other ones. I was just filming, and uh, and uh, and as I was going, I uh, was putting together some pieces, and uh, and I, I don't want to get ahead with that because that might be for for the other part. But you know, I think you know what got me to do this was a very uh wasn't it what was uh was a Two, two main things. It was an exploration of how do I represent, you know, the economic crisis, uh, the debt in the faces of real people. Uh, and the other thing is that I felt that Puerto Rico was after uh, the, the Fiscal Control Board uh, was appointed by Barack Obama and, uh, and the law was 
uh, moved forward by the US Congress and, and put this body to oversee all finances, I, I knew that this was going to change Puerto Rico's history and this was going to be a before and after a fiscal control board. So somebody needed to document what, whatever was going to be happening in the in the country at that point and uh, so i started with with the protests mm -hmm. and uh first big protest you see in in that, that first scene of protests in the condado plaza in san juan uh is the first protest i shoot with a documentary but i did not have any idea what i was going to do about it yeah um just just a, a little Tiny question that that first film that you mentioned is Compañeros de Lucha, no? Yeah, yeah, Compañeros de Lucha. Yeah. And the thesis film is Generación Standby. Yeah, correct? that's right. Yeah. Yeah, and and it's it's interesting because I've known uh, of your activist work and your journalism work with uh, Democracy Now and Telesur, and I also wondered. Um, how does your news work or journalism influence your documentary filmmaking? I mean, you mentioned that you were shooting this protest in Condado. Um, were you were you shooting expressly for this project, or were you shooting for for Democracy Now? Or did you already have like the intention to make something about this so, when, yeah. when you began? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, since I yeah since I, I'm always in, I I tend to work. Uh, as a freelance journalist, so uh, many of the of the things that appear in here, I made uh, I make uh, reports for for democracy now. I made uh, I make uh, because I I feel you know there's a, I'm making this documentary that is not going to um, to to be seen within two or three years. So you know sometimes you know this event people need to know that that it happened. So I, I I feel there's a need uh, to do that to uh, to make a journalism a uh, you know a journalistic piece out of it you know a, a news version of it so uh, mm -hmm. so I made I made that a lot uh, for the for uh, within this film I did it with uh with tele with uh, with democracy now but I also did it with the Washington Post too mm -hmm. particularly uh, with some stuff of uh, the hurricane and some stuff of uh, of Ricky Renuncia. And uh, and you know this is something that you know you get you need to you know some uh, at some point I was like a bit held back on that because I was like oh I'm going to I have all this amazing footage and I'm not going to be using it for the film and I'm, everybody's going to see it before the film and I don't know how it's going to affect me but just the editing is different so even though it is uh is the same uh, footage in in some ways you 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 see the the journalistic piece and you see the the film and it's com uh, something uh, entirely different so so i did that and then also the precarity you know where many of the instances this was the way that it would help me to finance me being in the in the field so making a journalistic piece was the only way to do it so what i always did with democracy now and uh and with washington post was saying that you know i'm going to uh, keep the the raw footage and uh, and uh, there was no problem with that, so uh, so I have so I, I did it a lot with with the raw footage that that I kept that you know didn't make it necessarily into a five minute uh, piece. Right, yeah, and maybe we can start talking now about um, how you approach your quote unquote subjects or the people depicted in the documentary, and I'm interested in hearing about the activists, the various activists that are in the film, but also um, you have some research collaborators that are some notable names in, in, in journalism as well in Puerto Rico and camera people that worked with you in the crew. Uh, your co-writer is Diana Ramos Gutierrez. Um, and there's also the collaboration with Bemba, um, this um, uh, street art collective so maybe you could talk about those different collaborations uh with your subjects but also creative collaborations in the documentary yeah so uh going first with the latter uh so the the ones i mean with, with the journalists i i did not uh, had uh, too much collaborations maybe when when it says references is that i want to acknowledge the people that i use mm. the, the data from mm. so uh so uh many of uh 
of the journalists there, there I, I knew I know their work, I, I know their credibility and, and some right. of those researchers. So I just, you know, use a lot of the research. But you know, since often in documentaries, people that the documentary filmmakers get the information for uh, do not necessarily are uh, accredited or, mm -hmm. or, or are very like at the low end of the credit. So I might mm -hmm. want to make sure like these are the references. And if anybody wants to learn more about it, they should check, check out their work. So, uh, but obviously, you know, uh, also uh, uh, Diana is a, Ramos is a great journalist. So a lot of the work was, uh, do, uh, a lot of the research was done uh, with uh, the two, uh, 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 us two together. Um, and uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, it, it was, I think with, uh, you know, with, with the other research that sometimes we get into and the experiences of what I, I get in the field, you know, we, we, we were able to, to have a very a strong argument for that. Uh, the other uh, very two important collaborations in the, in the film uh, from the creative uh, aspect is the, is the one with Bemba. And, uh, and Bemba, uh, you know, I, I really feel that uh, we, we were like working the same topics or in different uh, mediums for the last uh, four years, because ever since uh, the Fiscal Control Board uh, happened, you know, uh, was appointed, uh, Bemba began a, a very uh, strong campaign through uh, street art to put, a, to put a faces to the names. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, when, and through, a, and through a collage art, and um, I don't want to describe, you know, uh, specifically you know, of how they they conceptualize their art right now, but uh, but you know they they create this this uh, this artwork that they put uh, publicly and intervene spaces in San Juan, Mayagüez, and Arecibo about the faces of the people who are causing the crisis, which are often not the politicians, we uh, elected politicians, you know, which are people that have more. Uh, uh, more power than them, They're, because often in Puerto Rico, like in many places, people tend to uh, uh, blame the the local politicians because of corruption. And yeah, they are uh, uh, they are a huge factor of how of, and and they they hold a huge responsibility of the way we are living. But it's nothing I I feel compared to the people that really design the system. And that really, no matter, it doesn't matter if, if uh, Ricardo Rosselló uh, is, uh, is removed from office, the system is going to continue to operate and they are going to uh, continue calling the shots. So these are the, the, the real enemies, right? The one who, who make this design to uh, oppress us. You know, the, the politicians, I think, are just a featherweight mm -hmm. that we can get rid of easily. But, uh, but on the other hand, uh, these are, are the big fish. So I wanted to show the uh, faces and the name of the big fish, and it's something that Bemba has been doing for, uh, for quite a while. So I feel that we were also doing and having the same uh, the same uh, curiosities and the same uh, the same uh, inquietudes. Uh, I don't know how you translate that, uh, but inquietudes, concerns. And, yeah, the same concerns, and. Um, and yeah, and then we were, I feel like we were uh, like very parallel. We were, I mean, and, and when I met them, I said, I'm a fan of your work. They say the same. So, you know, it was just that we needed to collaborate in this project. I think it was very organic. Uh, then uh, the other, uh, you mentioned some, a, a lot of the, before going into Aníbal, the music, which I think if we had the budget to put this uh, film in theaters and, uh, and have it nominated, uh, for the Oscars, uh, Aníbal that make the music would definitely needed to be who have been nominated for best score because mm -hmm. I'm just uh, I think the the score of, of this film is is really awesome uh, and um, so well I, I was I was going to talk about him and talk but yeah I'm going to keep talking about him but I but uh, the the collaboration with An Aníbal is it was. It was uh, great because you know he's uh, he made a soundtrack uh, with uh, a lot of passion, like in the sense and, and a lot of a uh, uh, how do you call uh, like rabia in in English, 
but like you know uh, he he's mad at the system you know and uh, and and you can feel that in the music and um and we we experimented a lot of uh, ideas you know we talked about a lot of ideas we wanted to uh to be like caribbean epic type of film right mm -hmm. so uh, we we wanted to uh to show this is a, an epic story so you know you you, you see you have all this like uh epic sounds you know or a type of like orchestra orchestra tra yes. sound. almost like a star wars like yeah. theme or on the current yes yes, yeah, yes. And then we develop like a, a, a different music for each character or, or each group so uh, we, we we were we were working with that and it was a, a very a fun a, a process very well thought and then he had uh, among that all this uh, like Caribbean rhythms within it, right? You know, had the the, the guitar, it had the 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 bomb the bomba drums, and um, yeah, it was it was it was a great uh, collaboration having him on, on board. A uh, really a, a, a smart person, you know, and uh, he's he's the the, the Doctor Dre of our generation, <laughs> and this is how we actually call him because you know he works a lot with also uh, hip hop artists. Yeah. So you know he's the one that that makes the beats for for many of of them. You know, it's a it's a it's a mastermind of of the music behind that. So it was it was very good it happening, and, and he and he brought a, a lot of stuff to the table that really uh, put the film into the next uh, level. Uh, but uh, and 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 then also you know I gotta I gotta say that it was very important the collaboration of other camera people that were in in this protest that were not necessarily making a documentary but I knew that they were there I know that they shot some footage so whenever I had someone uh, so some shot that I needed that I didn't had I called some of the people who were at the protest to see if they had that footage and nobody uh, gave me any problem and nobody you know. Uh, would give me any difficulty, you know, they just understood the importance of the project and uh, and gave me the footage. So I think that is a, I think that would not, would not also be impossible if people did not know about the work that I do and how, and so, and how I've been committed through the years to do uh, activist filmmaking and really, you know, risk a lot in the sense or, or, or put a lot of uh, things, uh, you know, I put a, a lot of even my economic interests uh, constantly at risk, right? Because if it wasn't for spaces like Centro or Democracy Now or other people that hire me, my my work, you know, people know it's so political that you know I constantly put at risk my uh, my uh, my my opportunities of, of 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 making a living in this industry, right? And uh, so and and. Uh, and so I, I think there's some recognition from folks that I'm, uh, you know, uh, willing to do that. Uh, and I've been, uh, and I've said no to many opportunities to continue this type of work. So I think there's some recognition of that. And also the, the relationship for many years, you know, and I think that's where the relationship is is very important, you know, uh, that you, you know, that that you get along with your peers and, and the other workers in your industry, because that's... Uh, that's a, they are the ones who are going to be in solidarity uh, with you. So, uh, mm -hmm. and I think all this project is is about that. It's about a uh, solidarity. So, uh, from from the creative side, and then with the participants, you know, um, I try to uh, first of all, I try to make sure that uh, that everybody uh, feels good with how they are being represented. I don't want to. Uh, make a film that victimizes the people or uh, enter in, in this, which is a great problem with these films, you know, because when you talk to funders about this, and I want to make, you know, say this here, you know, when you talk about funders, funders want the, the whole victim narrative, you know, and, and this is very problematic because you dehumanize and then which are the victims that you are putting there, you know, black and brown bodies, uh, col colonized bodies from Puerto Rico. So, you know, I I want to make sure that even if I am showing people in their worst moments, 
that they feel okay with how they're being represented and uh, and uh, they are portrayed with dignity. So, so did I you do that? that? Oh, sorry. I just wanted like, did you do that by showing them like rough cuts or how did you do that? Yeah, I did that. I did that by by showing them a uh, rough cuts uh, of the film. And uh, sometimes, you know, we enter in, in, in some debates about it. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes uh, even showing the uh, what I film uh, there in the in the side because nobody would later be able to be here, you know, to come for a rough cut screening or something, you know. Uh, but and and also very transparent, you know, very very transparent with the people, constantly communicating. This is why I'm doing. This is what I'm doing. This is why I'm doing it. No hidden agendas. So you know, I I think that that was a, a very important aspect uh, with the activists because they are my peers. You know, I organize with them. I I need to be. I I, I am I am accountable to them, and also uh, I am accountable to the people that that are uh, the, I mean, every everybody here is uh, everyday people, right, in this documentary, but uh, the people who are not organized politically, right? So, you know, also uh, being transparent uh, uh, with that. Uh, obviously, I think this is a learning process. I think, uh, uh, and, and, and I have my own critiques and I need to go back to the drawing board and, and rethink and, constantly improving because I think it is a process of decolonization too and and the process of decolonization is that and deconstructing yourself is I don't have the answer you know so so I learn and I make a lot of mistakes uh, in the in the way too but that's the that's what I'm looking forward right uh, trying to to have to make films in a way in, in a participatory way that people feel that that they are okay with the way they are represented and that they also understand the 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 importance and that we we portray what they want to to say to the to the world so uh and you know this this could be like a bit get a bit tricky right because you know you say oh, i mean because people would because people might think oh but, well you're just doing what people are telling you to do and and you can fall into that you know or or if if you don't know what you want to to do, or if you're not in, in constant conversation, uh, because you know one of the things that many people critique later on is that oh, but you didn't talk about this person or this organization. It's it's a two-hour mm -hmm. film. I cannot mm -hmm. do it. So you know it's it's a constant. You know it's it's having a conversation, but also you know being a, being a very upfront also with my objectives as a, as a filmmaker, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, because I I I I I know the art, and I there's a, a story I want to tell in 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 some sort of way that even though I I open so this participatory uh, aspect about how people are going to be represented, it's not going to. I need to also make sure that it's not going to fall into that. There's too much participation, and then uh, the film has too many collaborators, and I feel that you the director should maintain certain type of control. So I feel my, I think I see myself more as a facilitator of, of these conversations, yeah. And if someone at some point says, I don't want that to go, I don't, that doesn't go, I don't care if they sign me a release or anything, you know, there's, you know, for me, if, if you don't want yourself to be shown like that, uh, then you're not shown like that. That's the yeah. no question about it. Unless you're a politician. <laughs> Then it's all, 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 all yeah. open, open season. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I wondered about that too, if there was concern with the activists that you were working with about being, about what we call carpet, carpeteo, no? like being surveilled or being depicted in certain ways in their um, activism. So that's good to know that you were like vetting, there was this vetting process between you and them. Um, we, we have two great questions. Uh, I don't know if I should read them, but if nobody says anything, I will. <laughs> I Okay, I will. Um, Jari Perez, I don't know if that's, yeah, maybe you want to read your own question. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> if, if you want, or if not, I can read it. 
I will read. Okay, given that the film is becoming part of the evolving protest culture that it documents, its recent screening at the protest demanding the cancellation of Luma's contract, for example, and we should say that the film has done an extensive tour throughout uh, the archipelago of Puerto Rico, so also kudos for that. Um, what future distribution plans do you have for the film in Puerto Rico or internationally beyond the reach it has already had in festivals and through initiatives like this one? Thank you. Yeah, so thank you for the question, Yari. So uh, the idea is that the, the film uh, gets uh, distributed in uh, streaming, other streaming platforms. Uh, we're working with a distributor to, uh, to do that, but uh, but we want to make sure that that we make the right choice when when we go with that. Uh, we're going to have the film uh, being distributed later by uh, by Terrible News Real in the educational market. So so please, for those of you who, who are educators, <laughs> now I'm promoting the film by the film uh, for your uh, school and for your libraries because that really helps a lot uh, to to get to to put money in the in the in the piggy banks to make the next film <laughs> uh, but yeah so that that would so uh, so that that's that we're working on that and uh yeah uh, and trying to uh see if we can find some some other uh theater showings outside of puerto rico but yeah we're very uh it is a very uh our operation is very limited the the access so yeah we're we're very slow in in all the steps we take. And we have another question by Maria Elena. Um, I will read that as well. Uh, one of the activists said during a protest in the film, uh, quoting, this is a class war. And I think you did a great job of showing how recent events have affected groups with little or no access to resources, youth, low income communities, elderly, et cetera. And opposite that, you mentioned foreign wealth, private interests, foreign wealth and private in interests. But there's a lot of local wealth in Puerto Rico, whether it's old money or new or rich, uh, people with power and opportunities and resources. What do you see as their role? And was there a conscious decision not to include that segment of the population? Mm. You meaning uh, that like the, the local Puerto Rican uh, high class, uh, the, the political class too. I mean, it, it, that's, I think, at least what I'm reading from Maria Elena. Please feel free to, to respond in the chat. <laughs> okay. In Puerto Rico hay chavos, como decimos, in Puerto Rico hay chavos. Like there's money in Puerto Rico naturally, or, or there is, um, an elite in Puerto Rico that has a lot of power that are local that are Puerto Rican. Yes. Los Riquitos. Yeah. 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 So I, I if it really that's uh I mean I I feel I portray that those Riquitos with the figures of uh Jose mm -hmm. Jose Carrion, uh, also with a, I forgot the name, but I don't care that I forgot the name. Also a, a, a Carlos, the other one from uh, from the physical control. Well, the physical Control board has a lot of riquitos there, right? Uh, they come from from these uh, wealthy uh, families and uh, are really the local bourgeoisie, and they are the ones that are making that work. So uh, uh, that's why I I, I take that uh, time at the beginning of the film to show uh, what is their background, to show that who, who are doing this, you know, are uh, are uh, wealthy people and and the riquitos who. Uh, respond to the to to the u.s interests mm -hmm. um let me see there's a clarification here I, i'll read it just uh, for consistency sake yes an elite that isn't necessarily a political elite just everyday people that can send their kids to nice schools get nice cards etc what what is their role in in, in all of this hmm i i i don't i i um Yeah, I, I wonder. That's that, that's that that's interesting. I, I I think you know there's a lot of uh, there's the 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 indebted class. You know, I think you know many people that have sent their their 
the kids to nice schools and have nice cars they're indebted you know and uh, and are uh, and uh so i i really think that for those uh, uh rich uh puerto ricans the the everyday uh, puerto ricans uh yeah, I, I think there's some even in the, if you would say that, there's some even that, that might be in, in the film that uh, that are uh, activists or have been in some way. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that there are rich people in, in those uh, social uh, diners and soup kitchens that are portrayed there. There are, there are people that come from wealthy backgrounds uh, that were there because I, I know that they were there and that might be, might might be kids that went to nice schools, might be uh people who have nice cars, but I, I think you know it was I you know I, I'm very uh you know I, I try to uh to think that that I want to always represent the people who are least represented. So that would be, you know, it, it's for me I, I would not really if if that's the if if someone wealthy from a wealthy background will will be in a soup kitchen is something that I would not pay attention at all. I'm, I mean, I'm glad that the person is there and is getting their hands dirty. So, uh, so I do that. But uh, I think you know this type of film goes also for those people uh, who who are that like that. You know, I hope they watch it. You know that they question their their privilege. You know, they question what what they are being able to to have in the country and how much are they are contributing because. Many of those people are also the ones that uh, that when uh, when we are in in a protest in the street, they call us that we are lazy people that we don't work, and that they don't have the time to to be in in the in the in a protest or be stopped by a protest because they have a business to run, right? So uh, so these people are you know. Are very antagonists to to the movement. You know, most of them are antagonists with the movement. The ones that I'm mentioning that could have been in one or two soup kitchens are the exception. But getting uh, into that is giving uh, a lot of uh, protagonism to to that class that uh, that I really think uh, you know it, it's not you know the, the root of the problem in Puerto Rico really right now is the is U.S. colonialism. So, uh, so looking at that, you know, it's. Uh, I wanted to make sure that that we see the 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 that the 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 big beast, right? The that is that that is the the United States of America. Mm -hmm. So it's a conscious decision, yeah, to to keep them out, you no, know, not not pay them any attention, but is. But I would like people that that are wealthy in Puerto Rico to see this film. You know, many have seen it. I mean, many of the sometimes many of the lawyers that defend many of the activists are wealthy people. Let me see if there's any other. There's another question, and there's a a, a response from from Marilena. But I'll I'll move on to just in the in the interest of time, move on to the to the next question, which is coming from JT. Has there been any retribution against you and your work from the people who support the fiscal board and right wing? Are there people who are trying to stop the film from being shown? Well, you know what? This the the day before the film was put out of theaters, we had a a full house. So uh, you know, uh, we had sold out. That, that night so you know it's uh and, and then you know they 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 took the 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 film away also uh, when later it was re-released in the fine arts uh system here in puerto rico uh i went because i went to see the film many times <laughs> like 10 times in in the theater complaining a lot about the projection because it was then that's the problem when you have only one company that you know, they have the monopoly and they're just not as responsible. But uh, but then also uh, I was watching how many people were into the other films, the more art house films, and every day I went, 
my film has the had the larger the, the largest numbers. So you know, it's uh, I don't think that you know, I I think that the film was was taken too soon, and uh, and I think that the film was not the film that was making the least amount of money. The thing, I mean, it could be a, it could be that there's a political force behind it, uh, but then there's also I I mean I. I know the reality too about the monopoly that Hollywood movies have. That you know they are they 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 send the, the movies in packages and uh, and they have all all sort type of, many, many you know other types of arrangements with with the cinema here. So I don't know if I mean it could be a possibility, but I also know how the industry operates in that sense and their and the whole aspect of. Hollywood could be, have been the the issue, but uh, but a really um, but yeah, there has not been a a direct uh, retribution uh, that that I know of, right? Uh, I know that you know I, I'm not a a person that that is going to be able to to get access to a to good jobs or to uh, good contracts or whatever here, because I, there's a lot of people of power that control a, a lot. So uh, I know that as a filmmaker, I don't, I, I, I do not count with the, with the investors' money in Puerto Rico, nor, nor le, uh, uh, even less the, the money from, from government or any institutions. So really, that's why I, I need to be uh, funding my films with, with outside money or develop uh, my own, uh, which is what we're working right now. We're trying to develop our own economic system that the films uh, become uh, sustainable with the different type of work that, that we do. So... So yeah, I I don't uh, I I really think that though that that might be something that is the consequence of of of, of the trajectory, uh, but no 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 there hasn't been like any uh, direct uh, retribution for that that I could say of. Yeah, and I just wanted to say just uh, for those that who may not know that uh, like you noted one there is a. Uh, um, a monopoly in theater, in theater chains, in, in cinemas in, in Puerto Rico held by Caribbean cinema. So I think it also, I think it's uh, something very noteworthy about how this uh, film was screened in Puerto Rico, that it was able to screen in those, in those theaters, um, those Caribbean cinema theaters, but it was also projected in public um, plazas, you know, in public, uh, like in public spaces too, as well. Yeah. So it, it did that very did and, that very well. And I also want to add in that, you know, it's not direct, but you know, it's all these things that you say, but the, uh, there's also have been total media blackouts from this film. And mm -hmm. uh, there was a total media blackout. So uh so we were able really to get the the word out with uh with the organizations, with the movement organizations. Uh, with people in social media that uh, made viral the trailer and 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 and, and pretty much a, a call to action, because mm -hmm. really the 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 press here that was that was a, a blackout uh, of this film, and uh, with us having the contacts in the in the press, so that's how we know that you know we, we were reaching directly to to the people there. So. Uh, so yeah, there was uh, also this uh, this blackout of of this film in, in the in the news in the in the in the local press. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, another question from Rafael. Um, first of all, congratulations on such a great film. Thank you for documenting such an important story. It was great to see all the stories of all the organizers, nonprofits, and activists. Can you update us on a few of their stories? Do they have their do they continue their work? Have they received much backlash? Yeah, so uh, pretty much uh, all the organizations that are featured in the film uh, continue making their work. Uh, the one that is gets uh, more focus on is uh, Jornada Sacado Las Promesas, and they continue working. Just uh, recently, 
they arrested 12 of their activists uh, protesting in the uh, in, in what would be here like the financial district uh, protesting the the fiscal control board and the and its six in its sixth anniversary so I think that uh, that uh, you know they have I mean and then they continue I don't I don't know why I say I think but they they have con uh, continued uh, so on but now it's uh, you know they, they're shifting a bit of, of their narrative to work with uh, against Luma right now which is the the big problem that we have right now which is the which is the the private uh, the 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 private corporation that now owns the electrical distribution in Puerto Rico and we have unstable uh, unstable electricity so a lot of uh, the work has been shifted towards that uh, but uh, but I think the and that, and now I know what why I say that I think and I but I think that really uh, promesa it is the only organization that continues having uh, at the forefront the struggle against the the fiscal control board. I don't I, I think that has dissipated in a way to other organizations and that is really a, a problem because uh, for example when when we were to uh to take the navy out of Vieques the the objective was was clear we want the navy out of Vieques you know it, it did not dissipate it through to other things and to other issues because if if that would have happened then it was lost the the uh, the objective but i think that having it you know so i think that we we in general in the country have lost the objective that the the problem is the, the physical control board even with with Ricky renuncia we there were some groups some people that said we uh, Ricky renuncia y llévate a la junta but i think that like Ricky uh, resign and uh, take the board with you but i think that that did not continue uh, building up so that that that's something that i think that is is an issue that a lot of uh, that 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 targeting the fiscal control board uh, has been has dissipated. Uh, the other groups, for example, the uh, Comedores Sociales de Puerto Rico with the soup kitchens and all, uh, they are they continue doing uh, their work, very important work. They have grown, uh, particularly the Centro Apoyo Mutuo, the soup kitchen, the the, the mutual aid center in in, in Caguas. It's very it's strong right now. It's it's a it's a it's a very solid project, and they also work a lot in the pandemic to deliver food to people. So since that's a, their their mission, and uh, the Federation of Teachers, uh, which is uh, profiled also in the documentary, uh, continues working with. Uh, the the whole problems with the school system here like they always have done um uh, and then uh i i think the bad news is there's the student movement the student movement is uh with the pandemic is not uh, really uh, as strong right now so uh really it's uh the the students at the university are are not really being the the force leading uh, the, the struggle and, and the movement against austerity as they have, as they have been many times right. but I think that the student movement needs to be more more active at this point they are they are needed so yeah uh, so i think yeah I, I think also you know when you talk about a uh, uh, backlash i think also the students are have been the ones who have received the a lot of the the biggest backlash, you know, because they have not uh, when they make the, that that protest that uh, strike that is featured in the documentary two thousand seventeen, they didn't uh, make their demands met, uh, and then also there was a a lot of repression from state authorities to uh, put cases into those students that were fighting for public education. So the uh, I think was uh, I mean it is mentioned in the documentary, right? So uh, 
So I think uh, that backlash, I mean, eventually they, this this doesn't say in, in the documentary, but all the charges were dropped, but just that period of having these students for three, four years in this uh, process, uh, trying to give them uh, charges of kidnapping, uh, of kidnapping uh, uh, the, the administrator of the university, uh, it was very, I think it, it, it had a toll on, on the student movement. And then it came uh, the pandemic, which, you know, has been very bad for, for organizers. Yeah, there's also you know the the issue of um, these of, of these ongoing struggles being co-opted um, in 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 their histories, and I think this is something that um, this film does so well that it connects all of these different uh, forefronts of the of the struggle so well. Um, fighting development against the private privatization of the electricity grid and the closing of schools, and it, it sees all of those things as connect as a connected whole that should be fought um, on, on all fronts. Um, I think we're at, at time, but there's a, a message from Alicia, which I'll, I'll, I'll just read. I don't, I don't know if it's a question, I believe it is. Um, I'll just read quickly. Alicia says, I just want to say thank you so much for your work on this project. I really appreciate the importance of this piece as a Puerto Rican in diaspora and also as a filmmaker. I just wanted to ask what are ways we can support your work? This is a great closing question. And what is next for you? How do you maintain your well-being, prevent ver burnout in future projects such as this that are very personal in a sense, but also really important to share, whether documentary or even your journalism work? Do you have any advice or suggestions for a young emerging body documentarians, filmmakers such as myself who are trying to share narratives that push back against colonialism in a Hollywood-centric monopolized film world? Mm -hmm. uh, entre comillas, funding, getting projects, green lit, et cetera. <laughs> it's a lot of questions, um, yeah. but yes, thank you, Alicia. Yeah, I, I think it is divided like in, in three questions. <laughs> uh, the first one, uh, I am going to put a, a link here, how to support uh, the work. I think, you know, there's uh, there's uh, different ways to, to support, you know, obviously uh, share, you know, talk about the project, you know, uh, post about it in social media. That, that always uh, helps because that is what helps us to get more people interested in the project. Uh, and get invited uh, in that. The other thing is uh, so a lot of support with people uh, really coordinating these type of events because uh, uh, we need to we need people to to take uh, take the initiatives of hosting events in their cities, in the in their workplaces, in their universities, in their communities. Uh, and and invite this film over because I mean I, I don't want it to be uh, from the top down that is hierarchical and we have this a uh, this type of uh, of uh, of community screenings that are very uh, from the top down you know uh, really uh, we don't have also those resources so for us community screenings need to be in collaboration with other people so uh, we need we need people to to have the initiative and 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 want to uh, build a, an event with with us together. So uh, so that's the, the way we are doing this, you know, it's true, true collaboration and anyone that wants to collaborate at other film in, in, in their spaces, please, please uh, write, uh, write to me. And also that link that I put there, obviously, uh, a, you know, a, funding you know uh, donations you know monetary donations are are very important for us to to keep going and having the the independence uh because uh, of the project because we don't you know we don't have a, enormous grants we don't have you know these films do not uh, get, get get commercialized but uh, the way that we are able to do it is by uh, crowdsourcing and, and self finance and now we have this uh this project of Cine Combativo, which it was a bit what 
Carolyn was saying, that we're taking it to many parts of Puerto Rico, and we are trying to, uh, uh, you know, uh, get this uh, Cine Combativo going to get uh, this film to as many people as possible free, uh, and then uh, and organize uh, cultural events to to show this film. Uh, so that uh, so we we are looking to to donations to continue uh, with the distribution and the outreach and also uh, you know continue financing uh, the future projects. As far as prevent burned out, wow, uh, I tried to think about that, but there, I don't have the privilege to prevent to be burned out. I think that I am burned out. <laughs> I am constantly burned. I, I think uh, I constantly um, I'm burned out. So uh, it's it's difficult. It's not it's not easy. And every time that I try try to take some time off, something happens that pulls me back again. So I wish that I I could uh, find a way to have a more uh, balanced uh, form of 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 doing all of this. And uh, I know a lot of the younger generations talk about self care and and that and. And all of that, and I think that is very important, but that is something that I need to find a a way to do it. But also for me, I, you know, when I when back when I, I decided that this was going to be my specialty, as I said before earlier, I decided that this is my calling. So, you know, I, I have a commitment with this and I really feel it's my calling in life to be making documentaries to be documenting these things so yeah it's uh it's sometimes i i burned out because right now i i just finished a film with i mean filming something in vieques and uh, uh i'm doing a, a new documentary about the life of uh revolutionary fisherman in vieques carlos tazo senon and when when I finished that that part of the shoot, I was just surprised with the with the whole Luma crisis here in Puerto Rico. So now I'm I'm on that. So I haven't been able to to breathe. Uh, but it's good when the light when the like, sometimes when the power goes off because that really forces you to stop in a way too. So I don't know. <laughs> uh, the other uh, any, so yeah, any I, advice. So yeah, I'm going yeah. So the so so for me yeah. So for me, I think that 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 that's a, a thing. But uh, but I would say, wow, that this is tough. Like choosing to make documentaries is tough. Like uh, the crew that was working with me in Vieques uh, this summer, uh, you know, uh, it was tough for them. You know, it was four a.m. calls, working until six p.m. Uh, you know, we were in a very in the in a very pretty island with nice beaches pristine beaches but we didn't have the time to to go as as often as, as we would like because and then we finish at 6 p.m getting ready charge battery you know media get prepared for the next uh, day so so yeah it's it's a difficult job to do so you need to really feel like it's your calling and it goes for me also to to that you know i would segue into the advice i think that you need to feel it is your calling to to do this because like it's uh what you're going to contribute uh, in life to to a group or or to something or to a community or or to a society so so you got to believe it that that you are important <laughs> and that and that really i think also uh, helps me a lot in the sense when i am like like focus myself when I am in the protest, you know, because sometimes, yeah, I want to take the camera, you know, turn off the camera and, and go and, and, and protest because I am so uh, mad about the situation and about what is happening. But also that 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 calling helps me to keep focus, say, well, I am the only one filming here, which is what happens often. So I need to stick to what I am contributing. There are many people chanting and protesting and uh, screaming. So, but there's very few people filming. So, uh, I need to stick to it because this is what uh, what I can bring that not many people can bring to the table. Uh, which I hope you know more people bring it because in order for us to change the narrative and uh, and what what you are saying, fight against colonialism in a Hollywood centric, we need. Uh, 
wow, dozens, uh, hundreds of films like this, you know, constantly, because they control a narrative. They're constantly bombarding us with, uh, with all this uh, uh, pro-capitalist propaganda, you know, that even, I don't know, I turn on and see Marvel movies, you know, I know what, <laughs> but, some, but I end up seeing them anyways, you know, I know what they're trying to, 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 uh, to make me think, but I do it because sometimes it's what, what I have, right, and, uh, and it's, uh, and it's entertaining, right, but do you have this constant, uh, bombardment of, of all those movies with those messages that we need to, uh, to do that we need to we need to have more filmmakers we need to produce you know uh, you know uh, hundreds of films uh, about these topics and hundreds of films by uh, people of color and and women and lgbtq uh, uh, people from the community so uh so it, it is very very important to to diversify the the directors that are there and uh, diver diversify the narratives. And I think, uh, and to finalize on, on that thought, uh, what I think is also very important is to, for me, to buy equipment as soon as you can. Because people often tend to say, well, you can rent equipment, you can uh, uh, put it in a grant so that, uh, so you would uh, rent the equipment and the equipment changes so much. But yeah, it changes so much. But if you make your your research, you can buy equipment in a way that, uh, you know, is going to be good for four or five years, and and switch what you need to switch every year or something. Not up, you don't need to update everything at all. You know, the microphones that I use, I, I bought one recently, but I've been using one microphone. It's very good microphone. I don't know, so, um, for ten years now. So. It, it does that technology that is still a very good microphone. So I think that it is very important to to own your own equipment because it's like owning your own means of of production, right? So uh, it helps you to to really uh, have the independence. And if I would not have owned my own equipment, which is something that I have, it's an equipment that I have been uh, acquiring very slowly. And, and and very intelligently in a way of, of planning, well, I'm going to buy this and then this and and, and buying things that that do not go bad also in in ten in, in five years, like tripods, you know, all this type of stuff here, like C stands, you're gonna keep using those. So uh so you need to to get that because it's your independence as as a filmmaker. So uh, if you have the equipment, then you're you're already one step ahead. Of of doing that, and I and I think that there's a lot of advice against that, but uh, that people should rent because you want different equipment for different projects. But now nah, I think you should you should try to to buy. It's it's really independence for you to make films, and uh, and sound and take care of sound because people when start, when people start buying equipment, they start buying a lot of. Uh, you know, expensive lenses and uh, and uh, an, ex an expensive camera, but it, it doesn't go at the same level as your as your sound equipment, for example. Then uh, you're going to have great quality footage, but very bad sound. So I put a lot of uh, importance into into sound, as you can see in this film. Like you, all the images have their natural sound, right? And and it is very important that that. Uh, that that is there, right? That uh, that you are able to to also get good sound and, and register and make sure to register good sound. More than image, I would say focus for documentary is very important. More uh, have good sound more than good image. Well, I want to say I think not only is your film great, but you're giving really great advice for emerging <laughs> filmmakers um, from the idea of the commitment to the gear and honestly everybody even if your gear is not top of the notch if your content is good it doesn't matter people will watch the film and it will make a difference so um anyway on that note i want to thank you juan for all your work and for talking with us tonight and carolyn also so for, for everything and for all our interpreters and behind the scenes helpers 
Um, thank you and thank everyone for participating and coming and joining us tonight. And I see from the comments in the chat that a lot of people really appreciated your film form and uh, were among the many people. Um, I want to thank all of you for joining us tonight and we hope you'll join us for our upcoming seminars. Next week for filmmakers, we're hosting distribution advocates who are people who are intent on informing independent makers what they need to know about the whole field of distribution because it's, it's kept deliberately murky so that people don't know uh, what they have to do. And uh, in two weeks we'll be hosting some funders including a group that I believe helped you Juan a bit, Firelight Media. Oh yeah. So, um, so stay, tuned, stay tuned, subscribe to our e-newsletters, the instructions are in the chat. And, uh, and support Juan and his filmmaking. Um, and we'll, when we send out a survey to everyone, we'll include the link so that you'll be able to see uh, how you can help out. So thanks, everyone. And uh, thank you all. Hey, thank you Hi. so much for being here and watching the film. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you, JT. Thank you, Rosalie and the entire crew of Third World Newsreel. Thank you. Thank you for making the film. Good night. <laughs> Good night.